There's a theory in quantum physics that nothing actually exists without being observed or at least remembered. The concept being that our consciousness creates our reality and unless you are in a place to be observed and therefore remembered, you simply cease to exist. For the Park Rose class of 1972, this poses a paradox of existential proportions. Why? Because in 1999, they tore down our memory! They gutted our existence, they destroyed our legacies, and then built over them with a strip mall of glitz and rebranding that left us alone in the cold, dark void between real and imagined realities, fading out of memory, irrelevant, without cause to exist. As a former athlete, musician, student, and member of student government who was once proud to wear the black and green of the Park Rose Broncos, I set out on a journey to recapture our collective youths and fight back against history's intentions to forget us. A quick drive through what was once our familiar haunts, including San Rafael Shopping Center and Officer Greeley, it was obvious that while many of the buildings were still there, many had ceased to exist or had been repurposed. Knowing that memories start with people, and knowing that the people most likely to remember us were those who taught and mentored us, I took it upon myself to invade the secret gathering spot of many former Park Rose teachers and coaches. Class of 72, the greatest class of the century or of all time. I don't remember the class of <laughs> Using visual stimulation through the use of memory props, I sought to jog their aging memory. Okay, not what I expected, but with thousands of students taught and their advanced age, well, it made sense that they may not remember us, except for this Clifford Baranth. Who was this Clifford Baranth? I just couldn't remember him. If the teachers didn't remember us, then surely the class of 73 below us would. The class that revered us as upperclassmen, respected our advanced intellect, and lusted after our women. I found a number of them at an annual golf tournament held at a remote location in the mountains. Following the golf, I used the same measuring devices and memory props to seek their warm and sincerely reverent memories of our class. No, sorry. No. No. Hey, Cliff. Yeah. Huh. No. No. Cliff. Cliff. Yeah. Neither one of those. That's me, for God's sake. Well, I guess I would know that one. Too, but, <laughs> okay. Uh, familiar, but not sure. Three more, no clue. Ah, Cliff. Is class of 72 the greatest class of the century or the greatest class of all time? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, who the hell is this Cliff Baranth guy? Clearly, there was something at the root of our quantum shift in memories that would unlock our past. It was time to pull out my ace in the hole. Surely my own mother would remember me and my friends. After all, she was married to my dad who taught and coached at Park Rose for more than 30 years and was a substitute teacher herself. Again, I used the same control methods and memory props. This one? This one? How about this one? Uh -uh. That's me! Well, your hair is not the same. No. 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 Cliff! What the hell? Again with Clifford Baranth. This was ridiculous. Okay. It was time for desperate measures. It was time to trick the universe into remembering us again. I deemed to retrace many of our hotspots and locations and leave lasting memories of our existence by way of a special metal tag with internal electronic GPS tracking. 
I began with a geographic footprint of our old school, which was a challenge, as after construction of the new school, our old school was reduced to a large field of grass and broken dreams. But the ghost of the old school lingered, and I was able to establish locations of some of the most revered places from our memories, starting with the single remaining building from that era, the metal shop. It was easy to lay out the original footprint of the building and retrace our history. The cafeteria, home of five cent cinnamon rolls and bowls of potatoes or rice and gravy. Here's one for the hairnet ladies. The smoking courtyard, certainly a thing of the past. I lit one up and buried a tag in honor of the pre-PC days of the open, free right to die of lung cancer. Countless hours were spent in the music rooms for band, choir, and debonairs. This one is for you, LaRoyce. The swimming pool, now filled in, location of countless hours of fun, instruction, and co-educational PE and living, breathing, exposed flesh. <sighs> The tennis courts are still in their original locations, but the infamous parking lot, home of untold skipping and ruined lives, is now but a field marked only by a single willow tree from that era. The football field, where the class of 1972 fought to an 8 and 1 record, one of the best in Park Rose High School history. The grass turf and grandstand still exist, including a lasting memorial to one of Park Rose's greatest supporters, Aldo Rossi. But I wasn't taking any chances. The grandstands, witness to so many great nights in our lives, needed to bear the words of our existence. But certainly our memories were more than just on-campus hours of books, music, athletics, and relationships. For it is outside of school that maturity, friendship, and more began. I deemed to place our tags in locations outside of school, but near and dear to our hearts. Diddler's Beach, the place where we frolicked in the gentle waters of the Columbia and learned that a keg and 150 high school students were too much for the River Patrol. Rocky Butte, where countless people groped their way out of puberty and into the murky waters of love and sexual temptation. The Inverness Road, once a favorite parking spot for erstwhile lovers, now a jail, and a series of industrial businesses, my search for my misspent youth continued. I, I lost my virginity here. Uh, have you seen my virginity? The Memorial Coliseum, location of the amazing mock democratic convention, countless concerts and playoff games. This one's for you, Mark Parthenon. And finally, out to Oxbow Park. And while I myself had no relation in high school with Mary Jane, the demon weed, that marijuana that our parents and faculty warned us of, I heard tell of countless parties at Oxbow and desperate times call for desperate measures. Maybe it was the wacky weed, or just a quiet sense of desperation needing sustenance and comfort food, but I stopped on my way home from Oxbow to grab a soft drink and a meal. Looking up, something clicked, and the tumblers fell into place with the universe. It was Cliff! Cliff Baroni, not Cliff Baromph! A horrible injustice had been done by the yearbook staff, and I was on that yearbook staff! It was time to correct 40 years of cruelty and set the universe back on track. Cliff, is that you? Let me fix this for you, Pat. I'll get the spelling right this time. <laughs> All right. And suddenly, in a quantum shift of reality, our memories came flooding back! In the class of 72, I remember the, the Jesuit game. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember um, beating McMinnville, who went on to beat Jesuit, which he never came made me very proud. It was a great class, great athletes, uh, easy to teach, no problems. So I remember really enjoyed the class of 72. It's a great class. I remember more kids from that class than the other 30 years that I taught school. Yeah, excellent. Class of 72, uh, outstanding athletes. One gift they had that I didn't appreciate was their singing ability because LaRoyce 
kind of dominated our spring practice with her, her little operas and things, so that kind of messed up our baseball season a little bit, but other than that, it was a great, great uh, class. Enjoy it, every one of them. So, I was in your marriage in the family class. I married Adele Nofield. Did we ever get an annulment after that, or have I been a bigamist this entire time? Probably uh, got a disillusion of marriage. We try to terminate all those. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sure she wanted that. Well, what I like to tell the class of 72, all the good guys and good girls graduated. They forgot me, too, and the rest of us. We went, we'd go down there when they were tearing that school down. What's important? So I go into the old teacher's room and some of the announcements are still on the bulletin board, going through the torn down walls and our mailboxes were still there. And you know, it kind of tugs at your heartstrings when you put a lot of time in it. There you go. I remember you all with lots of love. So the question is, were we the great was class of seventy two the greatest class of the century or the greatest class of all time? Of the century? Or all time? All time. <laughs> so do you guys have anything you want to say to the class of seventy two? Enjoy your evening. <laughs> it was a pleasure going to school with you. <laughs> so finally now we as Park Rose High School graduates of the class of nineteen seventy two are memories restored and complete can finally demand attention and recognition from the universe. Stand up now, grab your memory buttons, and repeat after me. Remember the geezers, we're still here. 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 Remember the geezers, we're still here!